Every computer on a network needs a unique identifier to find and communicate with other computers on a network. This unique identifier starts at layer 2 of the OSI, or Open Systems Interconnect Model. This layer is known as the Data Link Layer. At layer 2, each network device is given a unique MAC, or Media Access Control address, when it is manufactured. This address is usually permanent, though sometimes it can be changed. Older MAC addresses are 48-bit hexadecimal values that conform to the IEEE MAC48 standard allowing for 281,474,976,710,656 possible MAC addresses, or 2 to the power of 48. Due to the dwindling supply, newer MAC addresses follow the EUI 64 standard and assign 64-bit identifiers to network devices. MAC addresses allow switches to efficiently configure direct and simultaneous full duplex connections between devices connected to their ports using data stored in their MAC tables and ASICs or application-specific integrated circuits. Along with Carrier Sense Multiple Access and Collision Detection for Category 5e and 6, and Carrier Sense Multiple Access with Collision Avoidance for 8 to 11 wireless, this allows a Layer 2 switch to manage collisions when multiple devices try to transmit at the same time. However, these Layer 2 identifiers are not enough to provide the necessary routing and reliability capabilities required by modern networks. To meet this need, the TCP/IP protocol stack comes to our rescue. The TCP part allows packets and datagrams to be reliable. The IP part allows them to be routable. The TCP/IP stack, a protocol suite or collection of multiple protocols, functions at Layer 3 of the OSI model, that is the network layer, and from it we derive IP addressing. TCP makes packets reliable by providing a CRC or cyclical redundancy check checksum. This value is calculated before a packet is sent from its source, stored as field data, and recalculated upon its arrival at its destination. If the source and destination values do not match, the packet is recognized as bad and a request is sent to the source to resend the packet. This allows TCP, or the Transmission Control Protocol, to deal with mayhem caused by network traffic such as EMI, or electromagnetic interference, crosstalk, and attenuation that routinely damages datagrams in transit. IP, or Internet Protocol, makes packets routable by giving them each a 32-bit, an IP version 4, or 128-bit, an IP version 6 address, stored as field and destination data in the datagram itself. These Layer 3 IP addresses can be assigned automatically via DHCP or manually through static configurations. They are bound or glued to a network device's Layer 2 MAC address. Each IP address has a network portion and a host portion. For devices to communicate, they must be on the same network or subnet, otherwise a router is required. Think of the network ID as the street or neighborhood in which devices reside. There are many different houses, but they share the same street name. However, while on the same network or subnet, all devices must have a unique host ID. No two devices on the same network can possess the same host ID, or it will generate an IP conflict, and the devices will not be able to communicate. Think of the host ID as the house or apartment number on a particular street. Though the houses all share the same street, their addresses on that street must be unique. The Classful IP version for addressing system provides each host with a 32-bit or 4-byte IP address. Each byte or octet in an IP version 4 address contains 8 bits. Classes are determined by the range of values stored in the first byte of an IP version 4 address. These classes are A 1 to 126, B 128 to 191, C 192 to 223, D multicast, and E experimental. So, knowing what we know about base 10 uh, or decimal and base 2 or binary, let's look at the uh, classful IP version 4 address system. And the first class is class A. And for a class A IP address, RFC standards state that the first bit here, in this case the 128 bit, must be turned off. And if that's the case, notice that that only leaves me these remaining bits, 64 through 1, um, that can be switched on or off. And so that gives me basically a range of 0 to 127. However, um, we can't use 0 um, and we can't use the loopback address 127. Remember 127001 is the loopback address, means the, the local host or the host itself. So basically what this does is it leaves me 126 usable network addresses. Okay, and there's a formula we can apply to figure out you know, the, the combination or the number of networks versus the number of hosts we can get on a class A network. 
And the formula would be this, 2 to the power of y minus 1. And notice that it's a parenthetical expression. And remember that parentheses change the precedence or order of a mathematical expression. So I want to subtract the 1 first before I apply the exponent or raise it to the power of y. Um, so in this case, y would be the number of bits available for that network address. And again, normally it's the first octet if you look at a, a subnet mask for class A. But in this example, because RFC says I can't use that bit, I have to subtract the 1. So it's really simply going to be 2 to the power of 7. And where I to apply that, that gives me 128 minus the 127. Again, because it's the loopback, I can't use that. And minus the 0, I can't use that. So that simply leaves me 126 usable network addresses. Okay, now that's the first octet. Now remember that it's a 32-bit value, so there's four of these tables. All right, this is just one byte or one octet. There's three more to go. But those all belong to the hosts. So in this case, um, if I wanted to apply it, again, I could apply the formula there. And were I to apply the formula, um, now this is a little bit different in terms of calculating the host because I would raise the exponent. You know, the precedence is different. I would apply the exponent and raise it to the power of x first and then subtract the 2. So if I've used up 8 bits total for a class A address in the network part, that leaves me 24 bits, right? 24 plus 8 is 32, um, remaining for the host. So I simply raise 2 to the power of 24, that's the number of bits, and subtract my 2. If I do this, I can see that for each of those 126 networks, I can achieve or accommodate 16,777,216 minus 2, or 16,777,214 hosts. All right, so that's a typical class A um, address. And again, I've just created a short table here to kind of sum things up. So the range is 1 to 126. The networks are 1 to 20, uh, 126. Number of hosts, 16,777,214. There's a subnet mask. And this simply tells how many bits are being used for the network part. In this case, 8. And then there's three remaining octets or bytes, each, you know, 8 bits. So 8 plus 8 plus 8 are 24 bits left for the host bits. If I were to apply that. And again, how does that work? Well, this is the class C address. And in this case, all of these are being used for the network part, and this is the host part. So again, the network part and the host part. The network part needs to be the same, and notice it is, 1092713 on both sides. The host part needs to be different. So if I hop over here, that's what the subnet mask is saying, that this is sort of the, the name of the street, so to speak. And then this part would be like, you know, this is 6 uh, Fifth Avenue, this is 7 Fifth Avenue, 8 Fifth Avenue, and so forth. So you could sort of think of that as the street name or the neighborhood and this would be the actual address here, the host part of the ID. So that's class A. Let's look at class B. Class B, according to RFC standard, states that the first bit has to be turned on and the second bit has to be turned off. If that's the case, then I can't go lower um, than 128 in this case. See what I'm saying? If that bit is stuck on and I turn everything else off, the lowest I can go is 128. And if I cannot turn the 64-bit on, the highest I can get means that I can only turn on these remaining bits, 32 through 1, okay? And in this case, that gives me 191, excuse me. So if that's the case, then according to my formula, again, I'm going to apply 2 to the power of y minus 2. Well, that's the number of bits. And in this case, for a class B address, it's 16. It's two octets, or two of these byte tables here. Remember, there are 8 bits each, so that's 16 bits, minus my 2, so that's 2 to the power of 14. And when I apply the exponent and raise it to the power, I get 16,384 usable network addresses. Okay, So the networks have vastly increased here from class A to class B. But nothing, you know, we don't get anything for free. There's no free lunch. So what happened is it will drastically reduce the number of hosts that can fit on each network. And let's let's see that. We'll see that to be true. If I apply the formula down here, in this case, 2 to the power of x, or the number of bits, I'll notice the precedence. Again, remember, 
The precedence is different. Here you subtract first and then apply the exponent. But here you apply the exponent first and then subtract. So that will, you know, that creates a vast difference. But in this case, 2 to the power of the 16 remaining bits. So that's 65,536 minus my 2 is 65,534 hosts. So if I apply the formulas, here's what I get for class B. My range is 128 to 191, and you'll want to memorize these. The number of networks is 16,384, the number of hosts is 65,534, and the subnet mask is, in this case, 255255, which means that this is my street address, okay, or this is, this is the name of my street, 16 bits, and that's the network part. And then these remaining 16 bits, right, 8 bits each for each byte, this is the host part, or that's sort of like the, the number address on the street. Okay, and then of course the number of bits for networking being used is 16. And the number of bits for host being used is 16. Now the third type of class we'll look at, let's get a class C address. Now according to RFC standards, in a class C IP address, at least IP version 4, the first two bits must be stuck on. So the 128 and the 64 are always turned on. And the third bit must be turned off. So if you look at it, that means that I could never get any lower than this bit and this bit since they always must be turned on. So if we add the 128 and the 64, we get 192. And so therefore, I could never go lower than 192. And since I can't use the 32, since it's stuck off, my only choice, my only option, are the remaining bits here, 16 all the way through 1. So if I add all these up, along with my, my you know, minimum value of 192, then I get my range here, which is 192 to 223. And again, let's apply the formulas there. Well, that would be 2 to the power of y minus 3. Well, what are the network bits for class C? A was 1 octet, or 1 byte. B was 2 octets, or 2 bytes. And C is 3 octets, or 3 bytes. 8 bits per byte. So there are 24 bits that make up the network portion of the class C address. In other words, three of these tables here are the network portion. And the fourth, our last table, would be the host portion. So apply on my formula, 2 to the power of 24 minus 3. Remember the order of precedence for this formula is to do this first. So I subtract my 3, and then I apply my exponent, 2 to the power of 21. That gives me 2,097,152 usable network addresses. Okay? And the precedence is a bit different for host. If I apply the host formula, 2 to the power of x minus 2, in this case, I only have 8 bits remaining, right? Only one byte left, only one octet. So 2 to the power of 8 minus my 2, or 256 minus 2, and that leaves me 254 hosts. So again, if I take a look at that, in this case, here's my range. Here are the number of networks, 2,097,152. The number of hosts, since I only have one byte left or one octet. Notice the subnet mask reflects this. 255, 255, 255. In other words, an entire octet, or the first three entire octets, 8 bits each, or 24 bits, are the network portion, or the street name, so to speak. Only the last byte, in this case, 8 bits, the last octet, is the host portion. So 24 bits over here is the street, and 8 bits is the host. And then finally, network bits would be 24, of course, and host bits would be 8. So there's three classes, and there are other classes. There's class D, which is multicast, and class E. Um, due to the IP, uh, IPocalypse, quote-unquote, um, all of the IP version 4 addresses have now been given out on the Internet, and everyone, at least on the Internet, is going to be moving to IP version 6. But for the time being, a lot of private organizations and even smaller public organizations and entities will continue to use IP version 4. Um, for the foreseeable future, because behind a router they can pretty much, you know, reuse all these IP version 4 address, uh, address schemes.